Hello, I'm Manuel Lemos from the PHP classes and JS classes site and uh, I'm here presenting this video which is a demonstration of uh, how to use a relatively new feature of this site for importing packages with many files from version control repositories based on CVS version and Git. As you may be aware, using version control repositories uh, you can keep track of the history uh, changes that you do to your project files. Uh, usually um, those repositories are hosted in uh, a server somewhere. Now it is possible to import uh, whole sets of files from version control repositories into packages uh, published in the PHP classes and JS classes sites. Let's see what you need to do to take advantage of this feature to import or update your packages from version control repositories. First, you need to go to the, uh, uh, the page of a package into which you want to import the files. You can import uh, files uh, uh, into new packages or uh, an existing package uh, that may even have already been published. Uh, at the top of your package page, uh, there is a link named Import Files from a CVS a Subversion or a Git repository. Click on that link uh, to go to the page for managing repositories of your package. You can import files from one or more repositories. Let's add a new repository. You can set the repository name to uh, something meaningful to you. Uh, set the type of the repository accordingly. It can be either CVS, Subversion or Git. In the future other types of repositories may be supported. Then set the repository um, location. The location format depends on the type of repository. For Git, only HTTP protocol repositories are supported for now. This includes secure locations using HTTPS. The module field is only mandatory for CVS repositories. For subversion and Git, do not enter a repository name unless you want to import only files inside the subdirectory of your repository. In that case, the module should be set to the su subdirectory path. Now that we just added the repository, let's import the files into this project. This can be done by using the import link. In the repository import page, we see a small form to set up options uh, that will define how the import procedure will be done. I'll comment ahead a bit more on these options. First, let's retrieve the list of files uh, available in the repository using the retrieve the updated files list button. It may take a while depending on how large is the data in the remote repository. Please be patient if it starts taking some time. Once the files list is retrieved, you can see it on the page. So far, no files were imported from the repository yet. First, we need to set a few options to determine how a file should be imported or not. The listings show the original file name, the version of the file in the repository and the original file size. The current version and the current size are not yet set because uh, in this case the files are being porting for the first time. The analysis column shows some information that uh, uh, lets you understand uh, what is the current state uh, of the files. In this case, all files are new because the, the package is still empty, so the analysis column will show new file. 
The action column uh, has some buttons that let you tell the site what to do with the file. In this case, the default is to import all files. But you may change it to ignore any files in case you do not want to some files to uh, ever be imported. The description field lets you tell uh, what is the purpose of uh, each file. In this case, the description is empty because Git and also Subversion do not support file descriptions. In the case of CVS, the description is retrieved automatically from the repository server. You are recommended to enter uh, meaningful descriptions when these are not retrieved from the server. But if you are importing a, a large package, it may be tedious to enter descriptions for all files. In this case, you can leave it empty, so the site can use the assigned file role, name and uh, as description. You can change this behavior of uh, assigning the, f the file uh, description to the r file role name in this form. If you change it to leave it empty, you are required to enter um, manually descriptions for all files that do not have a description set for it. The role and type columns are meant for you to set the role uh, and content type for each file. The site tries to assume reasonable defaults for uh, these files, analyzing the file name and contents. So you just need to review the default values and change them when they are not uh, set to, to something that you consider to be correct. When you are done, just use the import the selected files button, hang on a moment and wait for the results. In this case, all files were imported successfully. Now you can go back to the package page and verify that all files were imported correctly with uh, much less effort than having to upload each file individually. If you update your project files in the remote repository uh, afterwards, you can just repeat the procedure and the site will import uh, and update the files again without much effort for you. The only difference is that uh, the site then will recognize that some files were changed and it will retrieve the updated file contents as well the log of changes done to each file. The log of changes is important because it is used to include in the email message alert that is sent to your package users every time the package is updated. This procedure will also work if you have previously uh, uploaded the package files manually. The site will automatically figure the log of changes done to each file in the repository since the date of the upload. As you may have seen, Importing packages from repositories is much easier now and takes much less time to do than with the traditional file upload method. This makes it viable to import more complex packages without pain. So, go ahead and uh, share your greatest packages with this method.